do want to bring in former national security advisor to President Trump, Ambassador John Bolton now. Uh, thank you so much for being here this evening. And Ambassador, first of all, was this a red line? How significant, how dangerous of an escalation is this? Well, I, I don't really think it's an escalation. I think the escalation began on October the 7th when Hamas attacked Israel. Look, these uh, Iraqi uh, Shia militia groups, Hamas, Hezbollah in Lebanon and Syria, the Houthis in Yemen are all uh, armed, equipped, trained and financed by Iran. And uh, all that's not for the convenience of these groups, it's for the convenience of Iran. This particular target is very sensitive for Iran itself because right on the opposite side of the Syrian Jordan border from Tower 22 is the what's called the Atatf exclusion zone sits astride a, a land route that Iran used to use to send weapons to Hezbollah this is a an area that provides access for Iranian planes going into Syria to attack Iranian convoys uh, I don't think the Shia militia would have attacked uh, Tower 22 without uh, express authorization by Iran uh, if there were ever a moment, and frankly, the moment started about three months ago, but if there were ever a moment now when to show American determination and take uh, a significant step to reestablish deterrence, the president's response has to be to strike targets in Iran. Okay, I want to follow up on that. So, you know, President Biden saying the U.S. will uh, hold those responsible accountable. We heard Senator Lindsey Graham uh, calling for retaliatory strikes in Iran right away. Uh, he said, hit Iran now, hit them hard. Do you agree with him? Is that the course of actions? There, there should be strikes on Iran. Well, you have to hold responsible who is actually responsible. And uh, as your report indicated, uh, uh, since October the 7th, there have already been 150 plus attacks on American military and civilian personnel in Iraq and Syria. And that doesn't even take into account the Houthi rebel uh, attacks out of Yemen onto commercial traffic in the Red Sea and, and against American naval vessels there. Uh, military personnel, our military officers have been saying for some time, the only reason we haven't had a mass casualty event like this in the past few months is luck, and obviously luck ran out. If you, if you want to establish deterrence, uh, you don't just hit the proxies that are carrying out the attack. You carry out uh, retaliation against the command and control authorities in Iran uh, and some of their facilities. And just say one more point here, you don't do this in a tit-for-tat response. You don't say, well, they did this and we're going to do that. To reestablish deterrence, or maybe establish it in the first place, we have to impose enough pain on Iran that it outweighs what they've done to us and is sufficient for them to say, we're never going to try it again. So let, let's see what Biden does here. So be specific. Proportionally, what would that look like? What would your recommendation be? Yeah. Uh, well, to be clear, I don't think it should be proportionate. I think it should be disproportionate. That's how you create deterrence in the mind of your adversary, that the cost to them uh, of uh, attacking our forces is so high, they won't do it again. But to give a couple of specific targets, there are Iranian naval vessels in the Red Sea uh, assisting the Houthis in Yemen. I'd put them at the bottom of the Red Sea. Uh, there are uh, Quds Force uh, bases in Western Iran that are used for training and equipping these Iraqi Shia militia groups. They could be attacked. There are many, many air defense locations uh, throughout Iran, uh, uh, any or all of them could be targets. None of this threatens the regime in Tehran, not, not that that would particularly bother me, but for those who are nervous, none of that threatens the regime, but it sends a very clear message. Now, we can go further up the, the ladder here if need be. Uh, Iran's oil facilities, as an example, its nuclear facilities, as an example. Uh, but I think this initial response has got to be very tough. I appreciate that. Um, I do want to ask, former President Trump says under his watch, um, Iran could barely scrape $2 together to fund their terrorist proxies. Um, you have been in his cabinet often butting heads with him. Is he the right leader to take on Iran or is President Biden in your eyes? Well, neither one of them is. Uh, neither is fit to be commander in chief at this point. Trump, as usual, is, as they say in Texas, uh, all hat and no cattle. He has a large mouth and a large ego to go with it. 
Uh, Biden doesn't seem to get the point. I'm not sure Trump does either. The center of the problem in the Middle East today is Iran. They are the support for Hamas attack on Israel on October the 7th for what the Houthis are doing in the Red Sea, for the Hezbollah missile attacks uh, on northern Israel, and for these Iraqi Shia militia attacking American positions. Uh, if you want this to stop, you have to make the people truly responsible for it uh, uh, pay the price, uh, and that's in Iran. As Al Haig, Secretary of State, used to say, go to the source. Go to the source. I hear you. Ambassador John Bolton, I appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.